coming up on the Middle Class VO Podcast. I mean, it's been such an amazing event to see so many voiceover talents from all walks of life, from all genres, uh, coming together, learning. People who, like I, I have seen myself, people who we've met through the events and through our events as well, have grown so much. And it's been amazing to watch not only the venue for, you know, amazing networking and meeting up with friends, but also learning and then learning something new every single time. So it's never the same. Well, if you need e-learning, we're just an email away. Call Polaris and tell us what to say. Explain the video, image and radio. We're slaying a local car is reading. I'll be always nowhere, ain't no stars. No, we're the middle class we old podcast. The middle class we old Welcome to the Middle Class VO Podcast. I love it. We're, we're going around the world today. Kevin Kilpatrick here in Nashville, Bobby Maxwell in Cincinnati, and Anna is in... Where are you, Anna? I am in Luxembourg today. <laughs> today. You sound so close. <laughs> Anna, if you don't mind, would you please introduce yourself? And I'm going to have you say your full name for us if you don't mind so I don't butcher it. That's all right. So hello, everybody. I am Anna Alcasas Collins. And I am a Dutch American, and I've grown up on both sides of the continents and have been uh, married to J. Michael, as many of you know, for almost 10 years now. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us. No problem. Thank you for having me. Well, Anna, as uh, a lot of people probably know, you and uh, JMC took over VoiceOver Atlanta. And the, the entire voiceover community, Bobby, do you agree that everybody was so excited when we found out that you guys were taking over VO Atlanta? Yeah, couldn't couldn't think of anybody better to do it with experience with, with groups and just incredible planners and organizations. So, yeah, I'm sure everybody was excited about it. Thank you, guys. That's, a, that's really great to hear. Have you always been a planner? I have kind of had varied roles. I spent about uh, 20 years almost in the corporate world. And within that, I had a lot of event planning roles with, you know, administration, HR, and also have attended a lot of, you know, conferences, seminars, uh, trade shows, things like that over my career. So kind of a mix of everything. But yes, I've been in events for a long time now. <laughs> so everybody was uh, despondent that it was going to be the quote unquote last VO Atlanta. And then here all the while, you and your hubby were wringing your hands together going, ha 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 ha, we know different. Ha 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 ha. How long, how long has this been in the works? It has been in the works since uh, last year. Ah, great secret keepers. <laughs> no kidding. And and you also bought a home in the United States. Was that kind of part of the whole process? Did you know this going in? To- that was more of a happy coincidence. We, My husband, as many of you know, is from the East Coast, is born in D.C. And we had been, he'd been wanting to go, you know, have a property in the U.S. for a while now, uh, especially with the fluctuating hotel prices and just, you know, the constant travel we do often stateside, especially him. And so we were kind of just looking for a while, actually trying, but of course with COVID that all, you know, got kind of put on hold for kind of a while. So, um, but yeah, it was just amazing that the right house and the right price and the right location just kind of fell in our laps. So meant to be, <laughs> yes, just so happy. And it's just great to have, you know, somewhere we can kind of just go when we, when we want to without having to worry about check-in times or, you know, hotel services or, you know, COVID regulations or anything else. So, and just be able to be at another home. So it's definitely a blessing. We're very happy. So now that you're CEO of VO Atlanta, uh, talk about, if you would, the history of VO Atlanta and what it has meant to you and and in terms of strategy moving forward. Where Where has it been and where is it going? Well, Gerald has built an amazing event overall, and it's one of the reasons why when we had been the last few years, I'm sure as you might have noticed, we have been platinum sponsors in some of the different venues over the years um, and have been, you know, had a booth, been a platinum sponsor, of course, started the Unicorn Award um, and different, you know, going on to different levels with it. Uh, When we had found out it was, of course, Gerald was stepping back. Uh, we entered negotiations and 
uh, really didn't want to see it go away. I mean, it's been such an amazing event to see so many voiceover talents from all walks of life, from all genres, uh, coming together, learning. People who, like I, I have seen myself, people who we've met through the events and through our events as well, have grown so much. And it's been amazing to watch not only the venue for, you know, amazing networking and meeting up with friends, but also learning and then learning something new every single time. So it's never the same. All I right. think part of our strategy going forward would be to continue that innovation, to continue, you know, how checking in every single way, how can we make it better? How can we make things, you know, even more exciting or, you know, what else could we add to this? What else could, would people benefit from? And looking at it from every angle with that in mind, primarily. With uh, COVID affecting everybody and, and definitely in our industry, um, a lot of us noticed that VOA 2022 had some things missing, like um, the youth program was not there, the Spanish program was not nearly what it's been in the past, and just the overall feeling of the event on a smaller scale. And I'm, I'm sure you're hoping to bring all of that back and, and then some, right? Yes, very much so. I have also been very fortunate to be able to assemble an incredible advisory council uh, for VO Atlanta and my role as CEO to have some amazing uh, VO talents and also some presenters and other people who've been in the industry many years to give me advice just to make sure that it's coming on not only from a logistics point of view, but also for a VO point of view of what you know, like you said, the youth group, the Spanish group, what else could benefit and how could we make everything better in any way that we can? It was funny. One of the first um, announcements, I think, J. Michael, maybe it was on a, a blog or something on Facebook, where he said, next time we're making sure there's free coffee for everybody. <laughs> Thought, that wow. is that is correct. That is actually already in the works with the hotel. It was one of the first things I actually mentioned. Isn't that awesome? Like, by, by the way, that's 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 a given. And the, yes, you have my full commitment to make sure that that happens. <laughs> not myself personally, and I'm not a coffee drinker, um, but I know how important it is to so many people. Having been in the corporate world, many people don't function without their coffee, and also just it gives people a moment. Especially if you have, I'm planning to have different coffee stations around the rooms so that people can also socialize and like we had that as also one voice last year as some of you might have uh noticed if you attended and people have we had such positive feedback we had sodas throughout the day iced tea uh it was a really great place for people to kind of catch up or discuss you know what they what they had in a session or things like that so definitely looking to bring that back and keeping people kind of in the conference space Probably also planning a few other surprises, which I can't really disclose yet, as it's still in the works and we're still <laughs> early planning days. <laughs> but free coffee would definitely be one of the biggest priorities I have as far as, you know, our, one of the first things we noticed that had to be improved, especially for uh, the, the long line. There was one person at the coffee uh, cafe struggling to get everybody's drinks. Um, so right. we definitely want to make that better. And there were some of us, uh, <clears throat> like Bobby Maxwell, who were waiting at the bar for a long period of time <laughs> for drinks. And it was, Bobby alone, obviously, was the only one waiting. I was like, Bobby, another wine? Come on now. <laughs> I'm just serious. But anyway, uh, no, so, so I know there's some amenities like that that you're going to be taking care of. I'm, I'm joking about Bobby. I was right there with her. So when... I will do my best to address the wine issue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are there going to be um, like those are fantastic amenities and that's going to just, you know, put that, you know, JMC and Anna touch on it. And and you said a, a minute ago, there's something. And that was my question. Now, I was going to ask you, are there any kind of big picture things that you can kind of tease about or is everything under wraps? For the moment, we are still in negotiations with the hotel to finalize the conference for next year. So we're still just working on the actual dates. That's our first step. Mm -hmm. We're also in the handover phase right now with Gerald, uh, getting you know everything from equipment to websites to any other items that are necessary to be handed over. So we're still in that current phase at the moment, which is why we don't want to announce anything just yet, but we are very excited to um, 
announce things as they are finalized. We just don't want to jump the gun too early as we're still, we have not yet at this moment finalized the, you know, we have dates with the hotel. We're just trying to finalize the details with them. I can't imagine an event this huge how much preparation it takes. And, and as we mentioned before, it's in the right hands. But speak, talk about being a multitasker. Um, you must just be like juggling everything at once in the next years. So you, you're a mom. How old is Tom? Tom is five. He'll be oh six in June. Have you, have, you, uh, have you noticed that you understand multitasking better as a mom? <laughs> I think most women, whether they have children or not, are always multitasking. It's it's kind of you know, and men too. I'm not just disparaging the men, just to be very clear. Uh, <laughs> but yes, moms, grandparents, aunts, uncles. I mean, everybody, brothers, sisters, whoever they happen to care for in the families. I think, you know, uh, some people thrive on chaos. I just, you know, I come from a family of twelve children, so I've always oh, had wow. chaos. <laughs> wow. So, oh yeah, I guess my parents didn't have cable. I don't really know what else to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but it's, you know, I think it gives you an, a unique perspective. And um, yeah, I'm really fortunate. I mean, like, for example, next week we leave for the Barcelona retreat. Oh, that's right. I forgot May is right around the corner. May awesome. is right around the corner. And then, you know, um, but we've been, you know, incredibly blessed to have this opportunity and we definitely take it seriously. That's the biggest thing. Uh, we're working already now with ideas, with the advisory members of the, we're reaching out to the advisory members of the team, uh, getting some of the people who, and we've had an amazing outpouring of people who will offer to help, which we are so thrilled about. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it takes a big team to do this. And obviously, uh, doesn't happen with just one person. So I think it's very much a team effort. So we hope that you know it comes together as we as we all want to. And yeah, we just want to hope to make a really great event for everybody, make a great space for learning and a great uh, event for networking and for growing friendships. And yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. Let's get worthy. You referenced uh, the JMC Euro Retreat going to Barcelona, and Bobby and I will both be in Switzerland for the JMC Euro Retreat. And as just, I know, yes, I have yeah, you on my list. <laughs> <laughs> and we were there in Normandy, and so we know what a first class event this is. And you are a huge part of that. And I remember in Normandy, uh, my luggage didn't show up. It didn't. My luggage didn't show up until I got back to Tennessee, like two weeks after the conference. I remember you were you were concerned that we all thought you really liked this one shirt. You right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and my wife Deborah just went on about how sweet you were and how accommodating you were, and you know, asking ways that you can help get me through that. And you know, you took her shopping so she could get me some clothes and stuff like that. And it seems like you were born to do this. And now that I know all the siblings, it, it sounds like you grew up with the chaos and you're used to managing <laughs> this kind of stuff. What is uh, what is your favorite part about managing these types of events? And, and will you or have you uncovered or discovered a least favorite part? Um, well, that's a really good question. I love the, um, the I think, well, there's a lot of different things I love actually about it. Um, having been to many events in my corporate life that were not the best. I remember thinking like, oh, this is boring. <laughs> I really don't want to sit here <laughs> listening to some economists talk about federal interest rates for real estate or things like this. And just to kind of being, I guess also in the corporate world, like I think I explained in my speech at Rio Atlanta, it's not always kind and it's not always there to be helpful. And one thing I love about planning these kind of events is it's amazing to my, one of my favorite parts is just watching it all come together and just being able to create, it's not about what we want. It's about creating a space where other people can thrive and they can learn and they come away like with amazing new confidence or a new skill or a new friend or a new network of people and a new support system. And it's been amazing to watch all the, like so many people from my retreats, some people from the conferences that I speak to years that are saying, wow, I booked this and now they're a speaker or now they're, you know, doing all these amazing things. So my favorite part is actually watching the participants thrive. And I think I thrive in making that possible. And my role is as the event person and kind of also just thinking, making sure that it's about 
it's about everybody. Everybody who comes as, as a client of ours, they're, they're our guests. There are, you know, they're not just a number on a spreadsheet. Like, I mean, unfortunately, many people are in an office, for example. They are someone that we actually really want to help them thrive in the best way possible. And so I love that my role can, you know, can make that possible and can it's one of the amazing things about working with my husband as well as we kind of make a good team in that regard um probably one of my only least parts sometimes is uh sometimes the stress of trying like you said to juggle it all it's always a balancing act and it's not always perfect so and i'm kind of a perfectionist (laughs) (laughs) but yeah it's it's always one experience and we've been so blessed that you know these events somehow miraculously uh when 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 they do come together and we we do find this you know amazing group of people it's just it's amazing to watch them thrive so you would to jump back to the the euro retreats um are you still planning after 2022 to continue those since you've taken on such a big uh, task with voa yes we are we actually i was actually at the venue last week (laughs) to nice. look for 2023 already. Ooh. So yes, we will continue to do them. And they will continue to be part of uh, part of what we do as long as, you know, people want to come, we're going to keep doing them. Oh yeah. Have you have you given any thought since you're going to be living here part-time now to doing something like um a retreat in the states to, you know, just for example, like to go to Biltmore Estate or something like that, or do you just want to keep it separate? We haven't really explored that yet at the moment. Um, we it's, it's not something that's currently in the works, but it's definitely a possibility in the future. You know, we haven't, we're not going to rule it out, but at the moment we don't have any exact current plans to, to expand it at the moment in the U.S. I do love that idea though, Bobby. Because, yeah, <laughs> oh, Biltmore is of a bunch like of a four-hour drive <laughs> for me. <I> know. <laughs> that would be great. So, Anna, I want to get into something that uh, I had a conversation with your husband. It's probably been a year or so ago uh, about you mm-hmm. and your budding voiceover career. Can you expound on that a little bit? Let's give it a ba-ba-ba. What? <laughs> It has, I've had some coaching with my husband. Yes. Um, Does he charge you? (laughs) (laughs) Double. (laughs) That's a good question. Um, Well, it's, it's definitely been, you know, as as honestly for me, a a bit of a slow go, mostly because I am busy with the events and obviously with me taking on the Atlanta role uh, of CEO it has been a little bit on the back burner, but I do hope to continue to grow it as as time and uh, energy permits. I would put it that way. And but yes, it's way, definitely on my radar. And that's kind of how he explained it, is that you're you're kind of dipping your toe in there and getting some coaching. And, uh, you know, he had mentioned some, you know, business narration stuff would probably suit your style and uh, sound. So so that's exciting stuff that, you know, you're going to become even more involved in our community. It's hard to imagine you becoming more involved in our VO community than you are. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's going to put you there on the front lines with us as well. So that's cool. It would. It's it's definitely a goal of mine. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going quite as fast as I would like, mostly because uh, we have so many events to focus on, obviously, this year. Sure. And of course, with our first VO Atlanta ne- early next year in March. So, um, but yes, it's definitely on my radar. It's definitely a goal of mine to get that done. And the need for global voices now is incredible. I mean, that that sound where nobody knows where you're from, I mean, you're perfect for it. And I also speak Dutch as well, and also have actually done a couple auditions in Dutch already. So, wow. Yeah, it's been exciting. That's exciting stuff. Well, we're very much looking forward to VoiceOver Atlanta, and we can't wait to see what uh, Anna and JMC bring to the next VoiceOver Atlanta. And uh, Anna, I just want to thank you for your time. Thank you so much. It's so good to catch up with you guys again. Oh, I can't wait to see you in Zurich here in about six months. So excited. Good luck in Barcelona, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, we're um, we're, we're going on like about, we're leaving next, uh, yeah, end of next week. So, because we start officially on the 2nd of May. So, yeah, very exciting. It's, um, it's going to be great. Will we have any uh, foie gras in Switzerland? <laughs> <laughs> 
Not unless you really want it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> I have plenty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think people had kind of enough of the foie gras. Uh, we were, I think, uh, I met Dave Fenoy at the uh, the Atlanta. He's like, just have to say foie gras, and everybody starts laughing. <laughs> yeah, right. That and bats in the bedroom. That's the big takeaway. Bats right? in the bedroom. Yes, you know, it's it's always great to have like the retreat, like the inside jokes that people get from you know when they were there. It's awesome. Right. Oh, right. that's funny. And well, if anybody wants to reach out with you uh, for questions about Vio Atlanta coming up or any other uh, you know wait reasons, uh, how could they reach you? Uh, the best way probably would be uh, via email. It's uh, just Anna at jmcvoiceover dot com. Very good. Yes. And then just, uh, or just, we're still, we, you know, like, as I said, we're still handing over websites and things are still being created. So, but we'll be communicating that as, as time goes forward. I can't wait to see what kind of impact you're going to make on this event. I, I know it's going to be the absolute best tip top shape. I mean, really hope that uh, we can do it justice and continue to grow and innovate. And yeah, we're really, it, it's, it's all about the amazing people who come, you know, that's really what it's about. So we want to make it the best for them. That's the, that's the priority. Thank you so much. Thank you too, Kevin and Bobby. Really appreciate you guys having me on here. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys soon, I guess. Thanks. Absolutely. See you soon. See you guys. Bye.